Hello, and welcome to your walk through Chagrin Falls. Chagrin Falls is a beautiful village with lots of wonderful history. In this video, we will share pictures of how Chagrin looks today compared to how it looked over 100 years ago. Although many things have changed over the years, Chagrin still retains most of its history and its charm from the early years. So sit back and enjoy a step through time. Let's start with this view of the natural falls taken from the bottom of the falls around the year 2000. Here is that same view from 1896. If you look closely, you will see a dam on top of the natural falls. This small four foot dam was used to power the grist mill and other mills that were on the northern side of the river. Also notice that the bridge was not as wide as it is today. This is a beautiful autumn view looking east from the Main Street Bridge towards the dam built by Noah Graves to power a sawmill and a paper mill. This dam was built in 1837 and was the fourth dam on the river in this area. The square blocks that are spaced along the top of the dam actually help to break up the harmonics of the water going over the dam to help to reduce the stress on the dam. In this view of the same area from 1900, you can see some of the mill buildings on both sides of the river. The building on the right is the brick building that Italian is in today. It was originally built as a carriage shop, but quickly became a blacksmith shop. A little wooden room jutting out of the rear of the brick building was an outhouse that dumped directly into the river. Over the years, the number of plants and trees along the falls and the rivers has varied. In this view from 1972, there are many trees growing along the sides of the falls. This view from 1910 shows how Chagrin had a more industrial look to it. The buildings were built for manufacturing and the size of the buildings were used for advertising, in this case, the May Company. You can also get a better view of the dam that at one time existed on top of the natural falls. This bustling view looking north on Main Street from the popcorn shop was taken in the year 2020. Notice the width of the bridge is even with the sidewalks running straight along the fronts of the buildings. In this view from 1910, you can see how the bridge was not as wide and the sidewalks do not line up with the fronts of the buildings on the left. Also notice the wooden buildings on the right. They are located where the Riverside Park is today. They are originally part of the sawmill and paper mill that were built there in 1837 and beyond. Over the years, they were also a planing mill, an automobile and battery repair shops, and coal sales offices. They were taken down in 1931 to make room for Riverside Park. Looking west, downstream from the Natural Falls, we see a restaurant with a killer view and some office buildings. This area has changed many times over the years. In this picture from around 1920, you can see mills and manufacturing along the north side of the river. These buildings were used as a planing mill and other things and was also home to the Deer Lick Oil Stone Sharpening Company. You will see in other pictures later in the video how the number of mills and dams along this portion of the river have changed over the years. This panorama of Chagrin from top of Grove Hill highlights the stone retaining wall built by the WPA in 1938. It was one of many projects that the WPA did in Chagrin Falls during that period. This location is also well renowned as the site of the annual pumpkin roll each fall. The landscape is a little different in this view from 1870. If you look closely, you can see that the bridge was only two lanes wide at the time. Some of the buildings that exist today are here, including the hardware store, the independent Order of Oddfellows building, and the Phoenix block where Starbucks is located today. 
The popcorn shop and the town hall have not been built yet in this view. The church steeple in the top back of the picture is the original Methodist church, which was located across Franklin Street from where the current church is today. Here, we are looking east up Bell Street from in front of the popcorn shop in the year 2020. The scene is a little different from the 1870s. At the time, this was known as Mechanics Row and contained many carriage builders and blacksmiths. The taller brick building on the right still exists today and is the Bell Street Gallery. The wooden building on the far right was originally a tin shop. This is the location where White Magnolia is today. The tin shop was moved to make room for the Ober building and is now located on 10 Center Street. It is the oldest retail building in Sugarland Falls that still exists today. Now we are looking west down Bell Street towards town from the entrance to the shopping plaza from 2020. You can see the popcorn shop with its red, white, and blue awning. Chuck's beverage can be seen on the right. Looking from the same location in the 1870s shows the amount of manufacturing that was located along the river. The white building on the left at the end of Bell Street is the grist mill. It was built in the 1830s. In 1874, Washington Gates owned the mill and built a sales office directly to the right of this white building. That sales office is now the building that we know as the popcorn shop. In 1931, the grist mill was torn down. This is the Williams House located on South Franklin Street. It was built in 1872 for J.W. Williams, who owned the Williams Foundry in Chagrin. When it was built, the yard encompassed the entire block from Maple Street to Center Street and from Franklin to Walnut Streets. Here's the home soon after it was completed. Notice the Belvedere on top of the house, which is no longer there. The house was in the Williams family until 1897. It then became the Crowdy Hotel for a while, and then it was unoccupied for a few years until the end of World War II and was known as a haunted house. It has been beautifully restored and much of the original features are still intact. Here, we are looking north down Main Street in the year 2020. The scene was not a whole lot different in 1890. You can see the original wooden tenny building from 1875 to the right of the building that the gentlemen are standing on top of enjoying a bike race from the time. The building just to the right of the tenny building is the old grist mill and you can see the popcorn shop attached to the grist mill on the right. Also notice the much larger town hall with its opera house on the second floor. This view is looking south down Main Street from the popcorn shop. Over a hundred years ago, the number of buildings along this portion of Main Street was much different. The tall building on the left is the Ober Furniture Store. The top floor was destroyed in a fire in 1962, and the building was reduced to its current two stories where White Magnolia is today. The building that houses Flipside today was originally Bradley's Grocery Store. Many other wooden buildings line the street. They were demolished over the years and the entrance to the shopping plaza was created. The unique clock stands outside a clock store that was where the reserve is today. In this photo from 2020, we are looking west on Washington Street towards Key Bank and Triangle Park. As you can see, in 1905, the roads were in a lot worse shape. That's an interurban rail car in the picture. The inner urban went from downtown Chagrin to downtown Cleveland from about 1897 to 1925. The open area on the right is where the old Irving House used to be located. It burned down in 1897 and was the impetus for the formation of the Chagrin Falls Fire Department. In this early spring day in 2020, we're looking north on Main Street from Triangle Park. In 1903, the same area was all abuzz as an early automobile races down Main Street. 
also notice the other modes of transportation in the form of interurban tracks and the remnants of horse-drawn carriages. The tall building on the right is the Independent Order of Oddfellows building. The big opening on the bottom left of that building is where the fire department used to be. The fire equipment was housed in the building and when a fire occurred, the volunteers brought their own horses to hook up to the wagons to go fight the fire. The fire department was there until 1939. Here's a current view of what Triangle Park looks like today. In the 1860s, Triangle Park did not exist yet. Prior to the park being created, a large carriage shop was located roughly where the bandstand is today. In front of the carriage shop was a creek that ran right through the middle of town. The carriage shop was moved and the creek was culverted over in 1875 when Triangle Park was created in an effort to make downtown look more beautiful. Here we are looking west from the bridge again. Around 1900, there were many mills along both sides of the river. The closest mill on the left is the Bullard and March Woodenware Mill. The dam for this mill is why the river looks so much wider here. Farther down in the middle of the view is the Williams Foundry, which made cast iron products until 1897. On the right is a planing mill. Looking north down Franklin Street into town, we see many cars in a bustling retail area. Not much has changed from this view from around 1900. Many of the same buildings are still around from this time. This is downtown Chagrin from the bottom of Grove Hill in the year 2020. Around 1930, the streets were all brick. Traffic lights were not being used yet. The biggest difference in these views is the size of the town hall on the right. At one time, the town hall was much larger and had an opera house on the second floor along with a balcony above that. The second floor burned down in the year 1943. There was not enough money to rebuild it back to its original size, so it was downsized to its current layout. They were able to recover the wind vane from the top, which was built by Henry Church Jr., and then reuse it on the rebuilt hall. Here is Triangle Park. It's a very nice park, but sometimes it's lost in the bustle and the traffic of cars today. In this picture from 1911, the park is more serene and visible. You can see the town's Civil War cannon in this picture. Today, the cannon is in front of the village hall. Also notice the inner urban car in the background. Grin Falls has changed quite a bit over the years, but much of it has stayed the same. It's that dedication to preserving Chagrin's history that keeps Chagrin such a great place to live and a great place to visit. Hopefully pictures taken 100 years from now will continue to showcase that dedication. Thank you for watching, and remember to visit us at chagrinhistorical.org or come by the museum at 87 East Washington Street. Thank you and have a wonderful day.